Hi everyone, as promised, I am recording a screencast for you guys. Uh, right now you should actually uh, see one of the files that you'll be provided with for tutorial two uh, as a part of module two in your online Design Essentials course. Um, but I wanted to set this up for you guys, uh, uh, and it's nice to have it recorded just so in case you need it. Uh, I realize that not all of you um, uh, have worked with Photoshop before. Uh, this could be a very new thing for you, and it could be a little disorienting, I think, to uh, follow a step-by-step -step tutorial, like Tutorial 2, but not really um, know what you're looking at or where you're looking at things just yet in Photoshop. So uh, so I wanted to show you, I have, um, I have actually two tabs open right now. I have the file called o2start.psd, psd means Photoshop document, and I have the o2end dot jpeg file. Um, the start file is the one that you're going to be opening and modifying and editing for tutorial two. Uh, it's a part of tutorial two. Uh, keep in mind, uh, tutorial two is two parts, so you're actually going to have an O2 um, start and end file, and you're also going to have an O6 lesson file that, um, that you'll be asked to do. Uh, I'm just showing you uh, the O2 files just so you can kind of orient yourself a little bit better to Photoshop before you get started. Uh, this is what the start file looks like. The goal is for your end product to look something similar to this when you're done with Tutorial 2. Uh, tutorial 2 uh, is, um, uh, if you want to play around with uh, the facial expression or you know rotate the bow tie or have the eyeballs be two different sizes, um, give them a funny face or something, you're welcome to. Uh, just keep in mind that the grading rubric for Tutorial 2 has already been provided to you uh, in Canvas and it's also viewable uh, in your workbook section that you've been provided with for Tutorial 2. So you want to make sure that you don't sacrifice any points by playing around with it. Uh, those of you who are comfortable already with Photoshop, make sure that you're actually following the tutorial step-by-step step as you're working on it because your grading rubric is going to grade you on how well you've done certain tasks and kind of going it your own way and just sort of winging it based on what the start and the end files look like might not work out so well for you. So make sure you're following the instructions. We have you doing things very specific way for a certain reason uh, and we want to make sure that you're learning um, the, the right way uh, to prepare you well for project one as well. Also keep in mind, non-destructive editing is our goal uh, as we uh, teach you guys Photoshop. Um, so uh, for those of you who are totally novice, right, uh, you can open uh, two images at once within Photoshop. Um, they open as tabs, right? Two separate files, two separate tabs for these files in Photoshop. Uh, I have my space completely stripped of any toolbar so that I can open these toolbars for you one by one and introduce them to you. Uh, the window pull-down menu in Photoshop uh, is where you will always open your panels and your toolbars from for all Adobe products. Uh, this window pull-down menu, you'll see that right now I actually have the application frame already open. That is the boundary window uh, that you're seeing right now that is gray uh, and has the ruler bar around the edges. Uh, if it does not have the ruler bar around the edges, that's okay. Under the view pull down menu, just make sure rulers is se selected and you will be able to see those ruler bars around the edge. Um, by the way, uh, in Photoshop, all Adobe products, to the right of the task in your pull down menu, you will see uh, a little, what looks like a clover leaf or a bunch of little, looks like ancient hieroglyphics or some strange alien symbols there if you're into ancient aliens, right? Um, this little clover leaf here is the command key. Uh, on your Apple keyboard, the command key is the one on either side of your space bar. Uh, for those of you who are using Windows, you will not see a clover leaf here uh, for your keyboard shortcuts. Um, instead, you will see the control key. Um, so in, in Mac, it's command R, command H, uh, command O for open, command P for print, command C for copy. Uh, in the Windows environment, it's control C, control P, control R. Uh, there are some slight differences between uh, keyboard shortcuts for those who are going back and forth between Windows and Mac. Uh, this is command R, so command R on a, um, on a Mac keyboard, control R on a Windows keyboard. Back to that Windows pull down menu. Uh, these are the windows that you're going to need to use uh, in order to be successful for tutorial two, but also project one. So window pull down menu, options panel, that is the one that is conveniently located as a strip along the top of your open window. This will allow you to control uh, and to give you options for controlling all of your tools. And your tools panel is the one all the way in the bottom. That's the one uh, that uh, probably when you very first open Photoshop, it probably looks something like this. 
Yes, uh, I don't like my toolbars uh, to be so far away from what I'm working on. So I will actually click and drag from the top of my toolbar uh, to peel it away from the edge so it's not stuck there. And then I like to click on this little double arrow in the upper right hand corner of my toolbar that will give me a double sided toolbar. Um, and maybe I'm old school like that. Uh, that's just the old school way of viewing the toolbar, but I feel like it. I find my tools faster that way. So, um, so these are the tools. Keep in mind, uh, each time you click on a tool, your options panel along the top gives you options for controlling each of your tools in your tools panel. Also, um, any of these tools, if you uh, right click or if you're on a Mac, you can click and hold uh, on your left side uh, clicker. Um, each of these tools that have a tiny, 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 um, and let me see if I can, uh, I can't really zoom in there for you. Let me see, command shift. No, won't zoom in. Um, but uh, each of these tools right here has a tiny little black arrow uh, in the corner there for you guys. Uh, that tiny little black arrow tells you that if you right click on that tool, you will find hidden tools that are beneath the one tool that you're looking at. Uh, most of those tools, by the way, are similar to the one you're looking at. So if I, for instance, look at this lasso tool in my tool panel and right click, I can see lasso, polygonal lasso, and magnetic lasso, all of which are related to the lasso. This one here, if I right click, I have rectangular marquee, elliptical marquee, single row, and single column marquee tools. So the tools that are hidden beneath the tools you see, uh, when you right click, they are all uh, somehow related uh, to each other, um, to be hidden together, right? Clone stamp, pattern clone stamp. Um, other panels that you'll need to acquire from your window pull down menu are, let's see here, ooh, the really important one. If you don't know layers, you don't know Photoshop. Uh, I'm gonna click on the layers panel there. Yes, uh, the layers panel is uh, the best way to cover your assets uh, in Photoshop to make sure that you are not um, getting yourself into any trouble in modifying or destroying pixels that you will not be able to undo later on. Uh, so use your layers panel. Uh, use it a lot. Get to know it a lot. Don't avoid learning the layers panel. Um, and, and make sure that you're truly understanding what you're doing with your layers panel for tutorial two and project one um, because uh, Photoshop these days really is all about those layers. Uh, back under the window pull down menu, uh, you will need the info panel. Uh, surprisingly enough, you're going to be using this info panel to help you crop later on, but not necessarily right this second. Uh, also, let's see here, uh, other panels that you're really going to need. You know what? The history panel is super helpful for you guys. So um, history panel makes it possible for you to go backwards multiple steps as you are working. Uh, so you can go back to a very specified step uh, in your history panel uh, if you make a mistake and need to go back. So the history panel, um, let me see, what else? Uh, the navigator, uh, believe it or not, the navigator um, is a panel um, that some people really, really prefer to use aside from other ways. Uh, the navigator makes it possible for you to zoom in, zoom out, scroll around. Uh, I'm gonna show you multiple ways uh, to do that uh, in, in a separate screencast here. And then under the windows pull down menu, let me see if there's any other really important things that you're gonna need. Um, no. Believe it or not, that's like it, right? We're, we're going we're gonna to keep it that simple for you guys and use just these panels that you see right here. Um, now, chances are high you're going to experience other panels along the way as you're doing things like adding layer adjustments, which I'll show you how to do, uh, to a file. Uh, but those panels are actually going to open automatically for you when you add those new layers. Um, uh, and I usually uh, keep my panels uh, as stripped down and as minimal as possible when I'm working in Photoshop. Reason being is because uh, real estate, on-screen real estate is really important as you're working in Photoshop, especially if you're working on a laptop with a smaller screen. Uh, the last thing you need are a ton of panels taking up space on your screen as you're working um, and uh, making it so that you have to, to scroll around constantly. So, so that's just a quick update on some of those panels, uh, how to open them, what they are uh, to a certain degree. Uh, we'll get into those panels in a lot more detail. Uh, I'll do that in a separate screencast for you guys. But for now, here's your very first introduction to what you're seeing in Photoshop and where to get these panels from.